Okay, here's a moment of inertia problem from the textbook that people were asking about. The region, uh, the lamina, is um, from exercise 12, and that, um, and the region for that is from exercise 11. It's the part of the disc in the first quadrant. Okay, so it's the portion of the unit disc in the first quadrant. Okay, I'm not going to draw that because it's really easy to to think about <laughs> and it's hard to draw stuff on the computer. So, and then the so, um, the density is proportional to the distance from the origin. So we're going to have to bring in the proportionality constant and give it a name. We'll call it k constant equals k. Okay. And oh wait, proportional to uh, I'm not reading it correctly. Uh, the square of the distance from the origin. There we go. Got to get the right problem here. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. So we want, let's say, the moment of inertia around the x-axis of this thing. By definition, that's the double integral of x, uh, sorry, y squared times rho of xy dA. And now because the um, re region is a part of a disk and the density is the proportional to the square of the distance from the origin, well that's r squared. Then we're definitely going to set this up in polar. So it's going to be 0 to pi over 2. That give, gives us the first quadrant if those are the theta limits. 0 to 1. And those are nice. That's nice that those are constant. That's one reason we're setting it up in polar. y squared is r squared sine squared theta. And then rho of xy, it's proportional to the distance, the square of the distance. And so, let's just put it up here. Rho of xy equals, we're really, we're going to write it as rho of r. is just kr squared. So that's going to be a kr squared. And then don't forget the r. dr d theta. Okay. Now this is one of those nice examples. Even though there is a theta and there is an r, we can break it up if we want. It doesn't simplify things tremendously, but it's always nice to practice these kinds of things because sometimes they can be crucial. Into an integral that's purely in theta times an integral that's purely in r. And in fact, we might as well take the k out all the way in front. And what do we get? The integral of r to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dr. Okay, and then that so that's going to be um, k. Might as well do that. R integral is really quickly. It's r to the six over six, so we get k over six. And then the integral of sine squared is we use the power reduction formula. Oh, that's why they made us learn that trig precal. Oh, that is one minus cosine two theta over two. And um, that's going to be, well, so that's going to be k over 12. And I'm going to do the integral. And that's going to be theta minus 1 half sine 2 theta from 0 to pi over 2. And the nice thing is the sine just cancels out. One reason, one way we could see, could have seen that all the way up here with the cosine two theta is cosine two theta. That's cosine from zero to pi, and that gets half positive, half negative. It cancels out by symmetry, and so we just get k k pi over twenty four. Looks like okay. Now um, let's see the moment of inertia i y and i. Zero. Hmm. Three three times as much work. But wait a minute. By symmetry here, this whole thing, it's the first quadrant of the the 
the unit disk and it's um, the density is radially symmetric. It doesn't depend on direction at all. So it's certainly going to be the same in the lower half of the first quadrant versus the upper half. So there's a symmetry about the line y equals x here. Um, that means that you're going to get the same answer if it's going to be x squared. And if you look at it, it's going to be r squared cosine squared theta. And if you look at sine squared and cosine squared from 0 to pi, pi over 2, let's actually plot those suckers. Sine squared theta. So the best way to do it is really look at the, the physical symmetry of the situation. But if you insist on like, sort of starting to set it up, we can still see the symmetry a little bit there. Um, mm -hmm. There's sine squared theta. And here's cosine squared theta. And if I look from 0 to pi over 2, it, one goes down to the starts high and goes low, the other one starts low and goes high, but the area under those is going to be the same. Okay, so that means that i y equals i x, and that means i naught is the sum of those guys. That's always true. So that's 2 i x, and so that's going to be k pi. Mm over 12. Okay, so that's that problem done, I think.